Okay, I'm going to show you how to repair a window sill uh, from dry rot. Here's an example of a window sill that has been damaged by water, which creates a fungus that grows in the wood. Uh, I have excavated uh, the damaged area here, uh, sanded it and what have you. Um, I've also started uh, this treatment uh, where I drill holes into the, the uh, wood adjacent to the damaged areas. And then I'm using a product called Boracare. It has a borate compound, which is anti, which is a fungicide to prevent the dry rot from regrowing. Uh, if you try patching these areas, uh, then the fungus will regrow in areas surrounding the area that you've patched because the fungus is actually uh, growing inside the wood and as long as there's moisture, it will continue to grow without a fungicide. And um, so it's always safest to apply a fungicide if you're able to. Uh, on the north side of a house where there's not sun to dry out the wood is the most common place to get this type of a growth, the fungus, which makes the rot. But you can also get it in other areas where you don't get enough sun. This area, and this window is shaded, and there used to be two very large uh, oak trees out in the front yard right in front of this that provided even more shade, and this window would have been wet too much. There was another problem with this window and that was the uh, storm windows were not installed properly, so when I moved into that was 25 years ago. I got storm windows, but the person who installed the storm window, and it fits in the other way. Uh, at the bottom of the storm window, there's always a mechanism for water to run off the windowsill. On this storm window, it's this little adjustable piece at the bottom which can be slid up and down to allow a gap for the water. The installer had pushed that all the way down, and then he had screwed it down into the windowsill. On a previous repair, I had filled those little holes. Okay. But over the years now, this house is, uh, was built in 84, so it's uh, over 35 years old. And, um, this uh, rot has taken foot, so I'm, I'm doing a more a major report, repair at this time. Um, so what I usually use a product called Impel Rods, which have a solid form of the borate compound. Uh, you drill a hole, you place the rod in it, and then you fill it over. And then if there's any moisture in the wood, it uh, distributes the borate compound and it acts as a fungicide. I, I couldn't, either I've used up all of those little rods that I had or I couldn't find them. So I'm using this borate, liquid borate, which is used for log homes. I purchased that for trying to get a handle on this problem in other areas of the house. But now here I'm just drilling a hole and filling it with that material in the hopes that it will diffuse out. And then I am um, capping it with a half inch dowel, which I just cut off a little pieces of. You can see that I've placed the half inch dowel uh, over here. Okay. And um, this is the first step uh, in this uh, process. Uh, I'm going to now use this other compound, this two part epoxy uh, by Abitron, liquid wood, wood epox which I have purchased about over 20 years ago, I think. Uh, not 15 years ago. And I've been happy with it in other locations, so I'm going to use that. I have uh, two windows to do. Here's the other window on this area. The damage here is not as bad, and I've already plugged it. And on the other side, it's, uh, there's a little bit more damage, and I have plugged that, so I will show you how this repair progresses.
Okay, I mixed uh, equal parts of A and B into a small cup. I stirred it up. I've been waiting four or five to ten minutes according to the instructions. And uh, now I'm going to brush it into the area that I intend to repair. Okay, I have uh, applied the epoxy. Uh, I basically have kind of um, slathered it on. I used up all that I had in that little cup. I've used it uh, generously. It's just soaking there. It has a relatively long working time, so I don't have to worry about it hardening on me, and um, I'm just going to let it soak in to the uh, uh, as much as it possibly can into the areas that were affected, and then I'm going to mix up the um, two parts of the solid wood and this actually acts as a primer for that solid wood so uh, the, this is completely compatible to mix with the solid epoxy as well and it just forms a mixture which is more liquidy but it will still harden solid just like uh, the epoxy so that you don't have to be very careful with this stuff. Okay, I'm just gonna let it soak in. I actually poured it in with a cup into that little cavity there because that cavity is um, self-contained. It doesn't run out. And I'll just let that soak in for five or 10 minutes. Okay, I took out two small balls of the woody pox. It's a little bit like clay, but very light, lighter than clay. Um, now I'm gonna knead it together and then I'll start filling it in. Okay, I have mixed up that first batch. You can see it goes on like, uh, kind of like bread dough, uh, but it has a long working time, and this is very sloppy at this point. Uh, I'm gonna mix up the second batch because of the cavity. Mm, I didn't have enough after I got to that larger cavity. And uh, I'll mix up another batch fill it in. Then I'll start tooling it nice and smooth. This is what it looks like um, inside the can. I would say after 15 years it is a little uh, dried out or crumbly but w with the um, liquid part of it uh, when I knead it up it still I can get it smooth and I think it's going to be okay. Okay I uh, worked in the second batch of um, material and um, now I'm waiting for it to dry. You can see it's uh, a little bit lumpy and the, uh, there was some solid uh, crumbly pieces inside some of the mechs but I think it's going to be fine because uh, I'm going to sand it after it's all done and it should come out smooth. Uh, the key is, is to try to apply it a little heavier than what's going to be needed for the final level. And in this case, that is just sloped downward. And um, of course, this is all basically on the outside of the house. And the key thing, it's not so much the appearance, nobody will ever really see this. Um, it's that it's watertight and that the um, sill does not continue to rot. Okay, so we won't know that for another 10 years or so. Okay, thanks, bye. Okay, um, here's an update on my windowsill project. I have sanded down the Abitron product, you can see here, and uh, it, it came out okay. Um, it's not perfect. I mentioned when I was putting it in, I noticed that there were little crystals, I guess is what they were, in the product. And um, so it came out a little bit grainy, but when I sanded it, it's perfectly smooth. And after I painted, I didn't expect any problems. Um, I did look at the uh, instructions on the product. And it, it did say that if crystallization occurs due to long storage, and this was, was stored for probably over 10 years, that it can be removed by um, putting it in a bucket of hot water. So what happens is uh, it, it melts back into a liquid and then it turns back at room temperature into a solid again. So uh, I, I, I did heat it up 
to recondition the product. And I used that new product in just a little one section that I had a little bit of a problem with. So I actually did two passes on that because of that. Uh, and here's the other windows. These ones didn't have as much reconstruction going on, so there was less, less issues. Okay. And this one, when I was um, replacing the window sashes, I did also manage, um, actually I was cleaning the windows, I, I did manage to break another one of the t locking terminals. So a even after having uh, put down the Abitron product, I had to remove this um, plastic um, piece, the balance assembly, or the, whatever they call this part of the window. Um, and in doing so, I did um, pull it out and I've lifted it up now because it has a little bit of play in it. So when I actually paint on this one, I'll be able to paint the primer and the paint underneath that and then slide it back down. On the other ones, I, I can't do that because the uh, Abitron product has completely enclosed it. So it shouldn't be a problem. It would, of course, be nicer to have the, all the painting actually underneath uh, these channels. Okay, but if, as long as they're, they're, they're sealed up, then it should, that should be okay too. Okay, so I'm going to pause now and I'll do the painting. Okay, I just put on a coat of prime on the window still and it seems to be fine. Uh, both of them came out okay. Uh, I'm using this oil-based primer. I had a hard time finding an oil-based primer. Um, but this one is a primer and it's uh, oil-based. I just like oil-based for a windowsill simply because I'm very concerned about it rotting and I just have this sense that the oil is better, uh, makes a better protection on it. and. This is one place where you want to get as much protection as you can, especially if it's already been compromised. And then um, tomorrow I'll put on a, a finished coat. I'll also use oil-based paint. I, I, I have this paint I've got. It's just oil-based white paint. It's actually sold as marine, but I, I figure, okay, well, it's gotta be good if it's marine, so keep the water out, so. So anyway, that's, uh, Oh, this project is coming. Uh, the other window cell seems to also be fine. No big deal. Okay, good, thanks. Okay, here's the update on the window cell. It's uh, painted with the oil based top coat. Uh, it's not dry yet, but it's, um, it'll be dry today. Uh, seems to look great. Kind of makes the rest of the window look kind of shabby now, but that's how it turned out. 